All right, we're live. Refresh. Make sure you can see us. Make sure you can hear us. Nothing yet. And nothing yet. YouTube, slacking it. All right, we're good. We're going to see who's here in the chat before we start. And we're going to talk uh, some business stuff. Also, you can come on to the live show if you have questions, anything you want to talk about with your business, sourcing, capital, stimulus checks, whatever you want to talk about. Uh, this is you can get in the chat, ask questions there, or you can jump on the live. So here is the link. Now, Josh, yes, Josh, we're talking about you. You can jump on Menace, Ultimate Ali, still kicking it sports, Patrick, and let's see, Jay Ochoa, Will, trying to get smart out here. How can I go out and get it if I can't go outside and get it? You gotta. Go inside and get it. <laughs> uh, Marvin, shoot to kill, 9-11, Intramorph, Josh Brown, and True Win, Divisor, Mr. Sports LA, what's up? How is it out there in LA, Mr. Sports LA? Texas Pete, still kicking at sports. Smooth Sailing, Felicia, Andrew, uh, Ross Shallington in the house. Nice. Flips Anonymous, Saxon, Doug the Pug, Hawaii Rams fan, Astro Drip merch, throw us back, Stevie D. Stevie D. Stevie D, are you, are you guys working or are you guys uh, working from home? You're 89 Romeo, Victor S. Angie says hi, oh. and Big Billin, Saxon, Flips Anonymous, and Fednand, and some other people coming in, OC Border. And more people. All right. eBay has a new CEO. I hope this means better changes. Smooth sailing. Did you see that? Yep, I saw that. Was it? Did they announce it today? Uh, they did announce it today. I mean, <laughs> it better be made of something because he just jumped into <laughs> straight chaos. <laughs> and I think, uh, let me see. Where was he from again? I think he used to be at Wal yeah. uh, Walmart oh, and also yeah. from eBay as well. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. So has some eBay background. Um, so, yeah, I think they announced that today, the 13th. So let me see. Caroline, what's up? Need more coffee. Uh, Stevie D says furloughed right now. Hmm. A hustle and muscle, Zach in the house. Uh, all right. So more people coming in. I put the link in there. If you want to jump on, if you want to talk and anything you want to talk about business-wise, we're going to start off. If you didn't. Uh, if you don't want to jump on and you just want to ask questions in the chat, that's fine. And if no one jumps on, we still have topics we want to talk about anyway. So we're starting off with stimulus checks. And some people did get them on Friday. Some people got them today. Some people might get them today or the next day. But you should be able to get them by the 15th, I believe. Man, I'm excited. <laughs> so Baker Brand, what's up? And even Jake, you know what to flip it. So. Oh. I did get mine today. Finally, I was able to check. Uh, my website from the bank was down. It crashed. I was wondering why. And uh, Will was like, what do you think? Everyone's trying to get their stimulus checks and double and triple check. So they are in. Now, here's the question. What are you going to be doing right. with that money? Now, for some people, you live in L.A., Mr. Sports L.A., Hustle and Muscle. 1200 probably isn't much. Um, if you live in... What would be a good town that this would be a lot of money? Man, in Ohio, that's a lot of money. <laughs> in Ohio, in El Paso, 1200 can go a long way. Right. Now, I would probably say this. Now, before we talk business-wise, make sure everything is fine with the family, with bills, right, the right. things you need to take care of. That should be your number one priority. I know there are plenty of people that are pumped to try to get more things to source online sourcing or putting it into stocks or putting it into other things. Uh, but that's going to be your number one right now, making sure you're taking care of the family. Right. It's essential, well for sure. essential for sure. Um, I think, you know, um, even with my situation here, I could, you know, pay a month of my, you know, car payment plus some, right? So I think if, if you're in a situation where you don't have a lot of capital and, you know, with all the uncertainty that's going on, I think it's really good to just try to get ahead of bills. I think that's one of the biggest thing. And I still remember when, when, you know, I was starting eBay, my whole main concern was 
you know, how much do I need to sell or how much do I need to make to just break even with paying the bills? I think bills was really important because at the end of the day, uh, when you got your bills paid and you got the taken care of, I mean, you're definitely gonna, you know, have a better uh, perspective of things. You're gonna have a clearer mind, mind. Uh, you know, for sure you're gonna be able to sleep uh, well at night when, when, when those uh, essential bills are taken care of, especially when you have a family. So I think that's what the, the big thing, the most important thing to do. And I think if you have um, kids, I think you're getting $500 each. More, yeah. yeah. Um, so the thing is, too, is that we don't know after this, are you getting one every month? Um, yeah, so don't give it to your kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't. Uh, so, you know, you know, paying attention to all the details. We don't know what's going to happen after that. So you want to handle the important things first. I want to see some of the questions that are coming in. Um, did you see about Carl Anthony Towns, which we just talked about that, too, before the live um, that his mom passed away, which is extremely sad for um, that was from the coronavirus. So uh, we got that news that was in here. Let me see what other questions in here. Um, how do you get your stimulus checks? Now, um, it really goes off of me and Ken talked about this before, too. Ken was saying that he thought if you filed your 2019 taxes that you'd be one of the first ones to get it. This that's not true. Um, be the 2018. And if you got your tax return, you know, direct deposit you're going to get it the same way right um, that that you got that money so that's the account that you should be checking that's that's what i'm not sure of because the last time i i mean i didn't get a return i had to pay and i used my bank in 2018 so i'm not sh are you correct me if i'm wrong can you pay through a debit card or does it have to be a bank account i believe it has to be bank account okay Okay. I believe it. Um, so you can double check to see. Uh, well, you haven't gotten yours yet, but you're going to let me know. Yes. I know, man. Bro, I'm, I'm really pumped. I'm really excited, man. You know, <laughs> it should be a down payment for a new whip. <laughs> <laughs> Doug the Fuck says 1200 is one taco here. Texas Pete paying rent with mine. Um, I'm do some good deeds with that stimulus check from Victor. Uh, ca uh, see, Castro Vid says new tires. Uh, 89 Romeo invested in stocks and uh, let me see did you get a haircut no I showered for one I just kind of <laughs> like threw it in there uh, my money is for rent money only Mr. Sports LA nice. 1200 is one fourth of rent in San Francisco <laughs> yeah if you're trying to rely on that you better move out of San Francisco yeah that one is rough I, know, I filed for unemployment because self-employed people can here in California oh so nice. yeah they'll See, I'll let you know what they said in 10 days, Caroline. So, yes, keep us posted. That's pretty cool. So, um, anybody in the chat um, that has gotten unemployment, um, so verify us that did you guys get the plus 600, right? Uh, was it per week or per paycheck? Um, let me know if you guys got the unemployment addition um, and how, how's it going for you guys. Uh, I know here in Ohio – they said it's a little backed up. People have, haven't been getting it, and some people are like uh, getting a hard time to apply for it. So oh, there you go. go. All right, so let's see what the chat says. It's only a week. Wow, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's what that's what Jake was saying yesterday in the live show, that some people are going to be making more money on unemployment than their actual job. So that's why um, it's not going to make a lot of sense for people to want to go back to work or stay at their job. Mm -hmm if they can make more money staying safe at home and not risking themselves out there uh, for people fighting over toilet paper. Oh, so it, where CVD is at 718 is the max unemployment rate plus the 600. So, um, that that's quite, so I mean, that's, I, I, CVD, can you live off of that? Um, I, for, you know, I think it's pretty decent, right? Len, what do you think? Yeah, well, it depends how many, you know, how many kids you have, what kind of right. bills you have. And that's that's what we also talked about how important it is on, uh, you know, living under your means, kind of like paying attention to like, you don't want to go and buying things you can't afford. And right now, uh, there was like a, what was it? Uh, when I first started the car and I went to go to the post office, it was a car commercial. And they're saying like, right now, if you're essential and you're, you know, working nurse, doctors, right now is the perfect time to upgrade your ride. 
And I was like, man, this is a hard sell. These car dealerships, they're working hard out here. And they were like, we can drive the car straight to your home. And you don't have to, t there's no one, there's no touching, nothing like that. No one's coughing on you and everything they can to get these sales in for some cars, upgrading your cars. Now you don't need to upgrade anything right now. Here's <laughs> the perfect time to pay attention on how you can get those debts even lower and prepare for the future after this ends and see where you can go. Uh, let me see, six months, no payment. Yeah, they've been doing that. Um, six months, what else do they have? Uh, we had banks, all these different signs everywhere, right. uh, low rates and uh, no, low interest rates and car loans right now, no better time. Um, it's wild. Wow. Astro Dip got what, 1100 a week? Uh, there we oh, go. That's pretty cool. Uh, roughly what I made as a trainer. So let me see Panda Rose. I'm on a uh, cat pay from Starbucks. Uh, still working, but got hazard pay from Danny. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, Astro Drip from the 1100 a week. Uh, let me see. I'm dead ass buying basketball cards. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I've seen. Um, I mean, it's kind of funny, though. We did mention the basketball cards thing before, but I've been seeing on IG more people getting in that, uh, more right. people ordering boxes of Prism and things like that. And I don't know. I, you could hit something good. You could not. It's almost pretty much like a gamble at this point. I mean, there's right. people that invest and buy cards straight off of eBay that are already graded. They're right. holding on for investment. And then you have the people that are opening hobby and retail boxes um, to get those hits and eventually get them graded, but no one's grading right now either. So that's what you're looking for too. We're still waiting. You know, people are still waiting for that. Um, mm -hmm. And so, uh, let me I, see. I think I think right now. I mean, if you're thinking about an investment, the best uh, stuff to buy are actually the ones that are graded already. Um, Holding on and yeah. stocks. I mean, you're saying stocks and graded. Yeah, well, maybe great. <laughs> I don't know. Cards thing is weird right now. I feel like I would, I would, I would de just definitely buy stocks. I would just buy stocks and hold for six to nine months, and and uh, just just trust the market. The market will always go up, and and since everything's like fifty percent off right now, um. It'll be easy. We'll see. I have me and Glenn have an experiment, so we'll see in Q4 <laughs> results. Let's see. I'm getting cards ready to be graded when they reopen. Still kicking its sports is ready. Um, anyone grab shoes from Stadium Goods with 15% coupon? Yeah, I saw. I saw that. Uh, I think they were for Yeezys, right? I didn't. I didn't see anything yep. yet. Um, so that. Let me. Where's my other notes on here that I had? Oh, back to the stimulus check. So uh, we talked about paying attention to that. And I think also just sticking to your normal goals. Um, and I would say whatever your long-term goal is, like we're going to have, if you have a down month this month, maybe even a down month uh, next month, still keep on going, keep what, uh, what you're doing as far as what you have in inventory and get that stuff sold. Down months are going to happen. Right. We got so used to uh, months of just nonstop you know, great numbers, consistent numbers. Right. And when that doesn't happen, there's no need to panic yet because we don't know everything, which we're going to get to the second thing, which is about stores opening. Uh, but the long-term goal, like for me, was like either paying off the house or uh, looking to eventually pay off this one, get into another one. You can rent the other one, uh, the first one out. So I'm still sticking to those long-term goals. But right now my sales are pretty much clothing, and I mentioned it yesterday, trash that I just found in a closet that I'm like, what happened to this? Why isn't this listed? Old stuff that just hasn't really moved. I like canceled, you know, I ended the listing, sell similar, had different photos on things and trying to get rid of um, items that haven't moved. You I know can make what? room for better things down the road. You know what? I have a lot that I haven't listed are hats. Mm. For some reason it's just like, so I found like the what was that the Nike floral hat? No, oh, yeah. I found that, um, and I have a few like uh, Project Rock hats. I just I just didn't list them. So, you know, these are the times that 
think about the things that you least um, likely or something that's the least favorite item to list and look for those items because I bet you you'll find some. I have a bunch of uh, jeans that me and Glenn found way, way back at Ross. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're still sitting there. Um, I did have a bunch of uh, the Under Armour Gore-Tex hunting gears. Um, I did sell one for $89 over the weekend. And, you know, I bought, I paid 20 bucks for it, but we just never listed it, you know. So I guess these are times to to do those stuff, uh, really using your time wisely and and really trying to find for those items that are not listed um i if if i i, I truly believe you have around like five percent of your total inventory that's not listed <laughs> and probably so as it look uh deeper to see what we can find in there i'm gonna go through the shoes next and see uh, all that stuff is listed though but i'm gonna see maybe um ending some items sell similar try to use right. some title words uh, maybe some better photos if some of them are kind of not that great. I think when I was really looking at like a white shoe in the background doesn't look as great. Maybe like a black shoe in certain backgrounds. So I'm going to look at that double and triple check. Um, let me see post office right now. How do you guys feel about post office possibly hitting the fan? And someone says fake news on post office. Post office, no way. Now, I did see that and I know they were looking for a bailout. I think Trump wasn't going to give them the money. And if that happens too, then it uh, looks like FedEx and UPS are going to be uh, reaping those benefits. <laughs> right, right. So, so I, that's I, the, I, would, I, mean, I would just go with I would go with someone else. And, right. I was just telling Glenn and Jake last night, and we discussed it that that at the end of the day, you know, with the categories that we want to get into, let's say sneakers, you know, at least a hundred dollar average. Paying ten dollars for shipping, you know, and those are the times that we can even, uh, you know, charge it to the buyer anyway. Um, I, I don't think it's such a big deal for us. Uh, I do think the first class is the one that's really gonna hurt because first class is just too cheap uh, compared to other uh, services uh, based on the time that you're getting it. First class is still like priority mail, two to three days, uh, but you'd have to settle for you know from ups or fedex something longer maybe five day delivery uh and i i don't i, I don't believe it's going to be that cheap but but yeah i mean i i i personally don't think that's going to happen uh, uh usps is always going to be safe just because of one is you they got to think about the jobs you know and a lot of it is union i mean they're union workers so we'll see we'll see what happens USPS will get bailed out. USPS isn't going anywhere, which I agree to. I mean, I don't see them uh, closing, but it's it's crazy how much, you know, not only do they make, the employees that make there. Right. Um, I do have uh, a buddy there that uh, works there. He's been at the post office for a long time. You see him, he's like kind of bored. He's just there. Um, they, they will make you wait in line for as long as possible. <laughs> like, trust me, he even tells me to like, I really don't care. Like, they can hang out like <laughs> you just like just depending on what kind of mood they're in right. and they have a lot of workers that don't really care in general right now those are the people that yes like what uh, ambient vibe says why would they close just lay off people they don't need the thing is too is that they're also paying a lot of money uh in retirement money for mm -hmm. uh people that have been with the post office for so long finally right. retire they're paying um a lot of them as well so um, I think Amazon, I think that's what Trump was saying, that Amazon orders are really what's getting the post office under. I really don't know any of those details on that, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't see them just uh, disappearing or whatever. Today was packed when I went, too. So now people are shipping out more stuff than ever. Um, let me go back. Uh, let me see. Man, where are we? I don't even know where we went on the on the chat on here. Let's see. Either you had good luck with used uh, kids slash youth shoes. Um, I finally sold some what, some uh, flu games. Uh, no pun intended for coronavirus flu games right now. Uh, but they took for they took forever. Uh, I think kids shoes have generally been taking a long time um, to move. So uh, I haven't really been selling anything like that. 
<laughs> well, he's reading the chat. What is... Somebody's stalking my store. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I, did sell, here. I did sell Supreme Frames. Remember? the? Oh, the, yeah. I have a bunch of those. I mean, I like them personally, so I, I'm not really in a hurry. But I, I sold two. And the buyer paid like two hundred forty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, let me see. Let me go back. Oh, who paid the supreme frames? Uh, how many turbo greens left? Um, I don't have too many left. I started when I saw them kind of creeping up at like three plus three hundred twenty five, three fifty. I did sell some, but I think I have like a handful of them left. Uh, let me see. No kid shoes. Don't even sell. Uh, even foams whack. <laughs> see, we all stock your store. Let me see. So, going into the next news, though, I want to talk about sourcing. And we did get news that uh, Goodwill in Arizona did reopen today. What? So, the <laughs> so they're uh, ready to go. And I know Texas was looking on reopening some things soon too. I think they were going to address school coming up next. Um, I think in the next day or two on what's going to happen. But with Goodwill opening in Arizona, definitely mixed results. We had mixed uh, comments and concerns. People were saying like, uh, thanks, Goodwill. You care about money over health. I'm not going anymore. People boycotting. If the well, they stay true to that, we don't know. The next one would be uh, some of the people that did go. Jake also mentioned that there was a thrift store opening in his area that right. has been open and people not wearing masks, gloves, anything like that. Is this a case for this one? Might be people being either you're going to be super cautious, hazmat suit, or you're not going to care at all and you're just going in the way you are. Like <laughs> You don't care about protecting or coughing on others or anything like that. Uh, so let's see what the chat says. Going to Arizona, Doug the Pug. Uh, let's see. They're a super red state. Good one. Don't even care about the virus. Let me see. Arizona. Let me see. It's a wild, wild west. You know, a red state would do that first. I'm good. Miss Sports LA. Let me see. When all this is over, that. What is the. Oh, In and Out Burger from Danny. Oh. In and Out. Arizona, Caroline. Uh, let me see. Now, people talk crap online, be the first in line. That's very true. Uh, I try to, like, get B, like Jake trying to confuse B yesterday in his <laughs> questions. But really, he'd be, like, the first one in line. Job security and health field in Arizona. Goodwill won me back. Uh, Goodwill has always been full of viruses anyway. Let me see. Right. <laughs> See, I don't even care. So that's the thing, though. It's like, uh, and even going to, so the post office today, I don't wear a mask or gloves. And usually, I, I mean, I haven't been. I only did it one time. That was when I went to Walmart. I wore, I wore the mask. The other times, I just went, went in as as is. Now, B, I know you've been wearing the gloves and the mask, right? No, I've only been wearing the mask. Oh, okay. um, every time we go to the grocery store. Uh, the post office, we don't wear it because we're just drop off. Um uh, um, I know you 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 have them scan right when you drop off or you scan yeah. yourself. Mm -hmm. um, but but we have a pretty good relationship uh, here with my post office that you know we've never had issues and they usually scan it every like every hour. You know they don't let it pile up before they start scanning. Um, so um, oh we're just we just you know social distancing is pretty much what we do. When we drop all that listen to that huh for those that listen to this exactly <laughs> you know um but what i notice a lot those around here in my city or area is um is uh all the older people are wearing masks which is you know they should and you know that, that's pretty good uh jake says these guys want their fans to recognize them <laughs> jake uh, let me go back up. Let's see. You don't even we need gloves. Just wash your hands from Mr. Mm -hmm. Eric. The thing is, is that I've been seeing people uh, with the gloves, like they wear the gloves and then they like use their mouth to take off the glove. Right. Well, not to defeat the whole purpose. No, yeah. I've seen people uh, with the gloves and then they're touching the carts. And then after they touch the cart, they're like touching their face, even like a little bit like ear mm -hmm. or their eye or something. And I'm just like, you know what? 
I, I do agree. At that case, just wash your hands, period. Like, why wear the gloves if now you're, like, putting yourself in a different sort of uh, hazard now wearing the gloves? I mean, complete backwards with this. See, I'm not wearing, well, not wearing your mask here in Northern California. And let me see. Eat with a glove. <laughs> uh, what the hell? I mean, <laughs> everyone's complaining about you put money over safety. If companies don't make money, they aren't going to be around to employ anyone. So I think that's why the president wants to keep, you know, get this thing going again. Mm -hmm. But what are the hazards out there? Health hazards. Looks like Wild West, everyone in bandanas. <laughs> uh, Jake said that looting will be up. Once oh. things start up and running, that uh, wearing a mask, you have no clue who it is. Right. Bandanas and other sort of masks go in there and robbing. Yeah, See, I deliver mail. No gloves, no mask. Oh. Savage. This guy's ready. Right. Let me see. Jake got the Jake Hawk right now. I saw a lady smoking a cigarette with a mask on. <laughs> I think people cut like a little hole and then just have that cigarette right there. <laughs> or in Jake's case, just like a little blunt right there. <laughs> Hold on. Um, I'm robbing Ross. Um, one thing that was, uh, I, I saw that we're in the at first, right, we had toilet paper stage and then ne ne went to uh, workout equipment stage, right? And then now we're at the hair clippers and hair collar stage. <laughs> That's what the Walmart, uh, I think, CEO said. So <laughs> so everybody's just trying to cut their own hair. I know my brother-in-law, my sister, was cutting his hair. They're not pretty good. So, um, I mean, Jake already tried. <laughs> <laughs> Jake did try. Or is this guy? I know he's in here in the chat. Yeah, so uh, so I wonder what's next. I mean, you know, here in our area, it's like, um, was the gardening stage last week or two weeks ago? Yeah, gardening yeah. stage still going on. That's what I think it's funny, though, is that they're saying that, like, businesses uh, that aren't essential shouldn't be up and running, things like that. The thing is, YouTube, I mean, uh, I was writing a YouTube comment. Uh, the thing is, uh, with Target and Walmart and Lowe's and Home Depot and all these are still up and running, it's almost like businesses are just as normal. Like, I don't, uh, I think getting the other stores up and running, like Goodwill and let's say Goodwill, for example, I don't really see it as like that huge of a deal if all these other stores have already been open and they're not even listening to any of those rules. Right. Anyway, let me see what the uh, chat says. Um, let's see. Me and Jake stay blo uh, smoking blunts. Duck the pug. Uh, <laughs> bandanas and scarves were not allowed in stores. Now everyone looks like they either gang bang or about to rob a bank. <laughs> well, wait till wait till they start wearing the balaclavas from Nike. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, my wife keeps uh, bugging to cut my hair from Josh. Um, you know what? And to counter Jake. I'm not cutting my hair. Why am I going to cut these luscious locks just because Jake got a bad haircut? No need. I'm going to wait it out. <laughs> this guy back it up. <laughs> Let's get it, Jake Hawk. No to flip it. $2 on the super chat. Still kicking its sports. Thanks for that. Wants to see that Jake Hawk. Um, how are weights selling? I, don't so, know. I mean, rookie reseller said he did 15000 in weights. Wow. Yeah, I'm. I mean, weights. Looking at offer up. You're looking at uh, some Mercari, but most like Facebook Marketplace things like that. Um, people that have lower price on the weights. Uh, make sure you calculate the shipping correctly. Yep. And, uh, you can send those bad boys out. Yeah, people are uh, pretty uh, pretty good about it because um, they're using flat rate. You know, flat rate shipping. So um... <laughs> I did see somebody with a flat rate, a uh, large box. Yeah, and just stuck the weights in there. But the thing yeah. is, the weights are gonna like tear through that like weed. Right, box. right. Well, there's this guy that was pretty smart. What he did is he put it there, right, and he saran wrapped the box. Okay. So oh. well, you know, so people, uh, a lot of people like tape around it. So um, I think that was smart. Um, I, 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 I was late. I mean, like. You know, like I wanted to get into action and stuff like that. You know, like seeing everybody like doing it, but I was just like, man, like, you know, like I gotta stay in my lane. I just gotta, you know, I just gotta hunker down and just polish what I have here um, before I start, you know, 
next thing you know, I'm going to be flipping weights and then my inventory is a mess and stuff like that. So I had to set priority first, but <laughs> I think that was pretty cool. I mean, I think that was, uh, you know, people getting in it quick and people they probably observed it. Right. Uh, yeah. So, so we'll see what's, what's the crazy one next. Freeway flippers. What's up? Says hi. Um, see, damn right, Glenn, keep the hair. Texas P, I agree. Uh, I'll grow this out like Bonafide Hustler if I have to. Oh, yes, but I'll grow it right. out. Right, we're just gonna grow long hair. Let's see, I could see companies uh, going after the individuals flipping weights. Um, I think certain brands, I think we're being picky about that, so I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the next thing, going back to the sourcing thing, so when Let's say Goodwill, they took the first step. They're like, we're going to open. They slowly start opening in different cities and states. Um, let's say Arizona, Ross, Marshalls, Burlington, all open. If you live in California, you live in New Mexico, maybe even Nevada, would you make the drive to source? That's my first question in the chat. Yes or no. B, hmm. if you live that close, would you make the drive? If it was about five hour drive, yeah. <laughs> All right, so you're in. I'm in. Josh says no. Caroline, no. Kent, no. DFW, no. Cashovids, hell no. Uh, what states are open? I mean, for right now, I think everything's still kind of locked down, but as we clearly saw, some states are making some. Some small steps, right? Actually, big step in you know, just randomly opening. Oregon is staying closed. Stay away, vultures. Uh, let me see. No, no, negative. I would drive to El Paso just to see Glenn laugh out loud. <laughs> no, and no, uh, there isn't going to be anything. Stay home. No, uh, Felicia said I would make the drive. Uh, people are dying for God's sakes. Kent, exactly. So, some people care, some people don't. That's why I wanted to see this uh, answers. Yes and yes. Ross Shallington. Um, how would some Ross be open and the DC and everything sending stuff to different stores across the country? I wonder how they would do that as far as inventory. What would go where? Yeah, I th I think they're just I think they're just probably gonna if if that's gonna happen, I think they're just gonna run through what they have already. I mean, we mentioned it before that they do have a back room and. And before they actually, I mean, right after they shut down the stores to the public, they still had workers working there and deliveries coming in. So um, they they still have inventory. I think they should have inventory good to last them a few weeks uh, before like their fulfillment center or they start buying again. Yeah, I don't see the thing is to even if Ross starts opening nationwide too, I think still takes some time for them to get new inventory. Anyway, I don't think you're going to be losing out the first week or so. Right. Uh, it's going to take some time to kind of rebuild. So I wouldn't rush in saying like, Hey, I got to go right, right now. The first day it opens, um, unless you have a YouTube channel and the tagline <laughs> is go out and get it. Then maybe you go out. Go. Um, <laughs> let's see. Imagine how mad the employees are going to be. Uh, probably, well, I think some are probably maybe a little bit excited to get out and do something, but not mad hours. Uh, they don't want to work mad hours, but maybe just to slowly get into things. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me see. Next one. Did you guys see the PayPal? No instant transfer fees. Yes. Which also we have to talk about PayPal. We're going to get into that. Mm -hmm. Um, those dirty ass Ross carts. And right now, even going to the get groceries, I'm taking the Ikea bag, those blue Ikea bag that B gave me. I'm not touching carts. I'm not touching these uh, little, what are they called? Baskets. I'm not touching yeah. baskets. I'm just taking the huge bag and whatever I can put in there. Wow, that's pretty good. That's discipline. <laughs> that's discipline. Uh, my kids want to go back to school. I'm pretty sure parents also want their kids to go back to school. Tired of having them around. Some of them. Mm. Uh, let me see. Where are we? Something about oh, Ross Ellington's in here. <laughs> let me see. I just found out three good ones near me just opened, Mr. 89 Romeo. So he's ready. Cross list apps from Patrick. Any recommendations? Maybe a virtual assistant. Um, Did you end up trying the app that, I mean, not app, but the. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the list perfectly. 
Um, I didn't get to it, one, because me and my wife was able to cross-list all our shoes to Poshmark and Mercari within three days. So you do not need a virtual assistant unless you probably have over 2,000 items. Mm. Um, we do have a 1,000 item, uh, but at item store, but we didn't list the whole 1,000 because I was just a lot more uh, interested on cross-listing uh, men's and women's shoes first. So uh, my wife still like puts in like an hour or two a day to cross-list um, with a, the higher-end clothing. So we're just trying to get the most valuable stuff listed first. Um, uh, I, I don't. I think it will take you a week, even if you do it really slow, putting in five hours a day to cross-list it to uh, different platforms. Um, I do want to say though that Mercari is do is doing pretty well for us. Um, we sold my first um, item April fourth or April second, and then now we're almost to eighteen uh, sixteen hundred uh, in Mercari in sales. Uh, so I guess you know everybody that that that's struggling or whatnot or that 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 hasn't opened Mercari yet. Make sure you guys you know, capitalize on it and uh, just learn the platform too, because this is the time where you can learn, you know, make make small mistakes, small errors, but at the same time, by the time everything's back up and running, you're gonna have to be, you're gonna be able to build your store with good reviews and stuff like that. So you gotta, you gotta uh, put in the work. See, so you can't bring your own bags in stores, Bay Area. Um, see, we're talking about the cross listing, uh, no reusable bags. Oh man, these guys are getting picky out here with the not, no reusable bags. I don't like that. Uh, hire a virtual assistant. Let me see. They also talked about, let me see. I think the same ones on here, uh, list perfectly. Same thing. Mm -hmm. I work at a school. I'm glad that the parents have to deal with their own annoying kids. <laughs> yeah. I bet. <laughs> yeah. Then they realize, you know, I wonder why this kid, every time the kid gets in trouble, parents are always denying, like, no, no, he's, you know, these little angels, they would never do such a thing. Yeah. And then now they see them, you know, those little Satan's minions around the house and see how they really are. <laughs> uh, let me go back on here. Now, moving from Ross and all that, let's say in the open, I want to go to Nike Outlet and I want to talk about um, Nike outlets and far as what you guys are planning to do and even what the B plans to do. Now he has more outlets. I only have one, the one outlet I can go to. You do have several options. Let's say when they start up and running again, what do you plan to do? I would say number one is not rushing on buying things. I would really say to plan it out and to really look online. We always talk about checking comps, always check about doing, um, you know, checking all these things, but look to see what Nike has in stock on the app now that they've been doing Nike outlet type of sales and see what they have in stock. What kind of sizes and do you have similar items in your outlet? What do the prices look like? I think I would only go in if they're really, really cheap that you can see great deals and lower inventory around the web period. That means all platforms, including Nike. Right. Because you don't want to be stuck with um, stuff that everybody else has mm -hmm. uh, because everybody rushed in to buy the same items and really weigh that out. Also look at, you know, what is kind of going to go up in value over time. Um, and we talked about this maybe like two months ago, having, you know, like Air Max 95s, Air Max 97s, Air Max 98s. These are good shoes that you're going to hold on to for the long run. Right. You know, saying they're a decent colorway, even after people sell, you still have them. You still make the money on those. Right. Now, we're talking about lower end items that Air Max Access or yeah. Tailwinds or even some of the Ultra Boost NMDs I've been seeing. They're like, they're not moving. Right. Um, I would say also, if you are going to spend that money and buy things, you know, be picky on that. What could you see kind of improving in value over time? Right. I think I think you got to look, look at it as... I mean, I've said it again, it's always good to source a season ahead. Uh, you know, I mean, usually by the time, what, April or May hits, 
me and the wife were already sourcing for Q4. Um, you know, because those are the things that are not really selling now. Uh, you know, I would load up on jackets and, you know, clearance items. Um, I think those are the things that you want to pay attention to because, you know, jackets or outerwear may be really cheap once the outlets come, come, come back in because they're just trying to sell stuff for summer. So they're trying to move water. Try to look for those inventories that they're trying to clear out. Uh, if it's cheap enough, go in. But, but like Glenn said, you have to be patient because who knows? Nike's probably going to be running 30% off extra for the next, you know, three weeks or month as soon as it gets back up. So, so that's something that always to consider. And just if you can't find anything, don't buy anything. <laughs> that's the right rule. Yeah, no need to rush into that. Um, even though it is going to be exciting to get back into it. Uh, I think it's not going to be exciting the first week, like we talked about, with that same old inventory that you saw before they closed. Mm -hmm. So if you are hoping for something different, I really don't see that happening um, yet. But I do agree with B, probably an extra 30% off. They might do it in bin. They might do back wall. They might even get a little diluted at some point because you're going to probably see the same sales over and over again. I think they're going to try to get those numbers back up and feel have some sort of draw Right. Finally, finally, Nike employees might be really nice this time. <laughs> some, <laughs> some of them, especially when they see the resellers. Maybe yeah. not. Right. They but might start loving on you. <laughs> they're going to need something to bring the people in if people are still scared of getting the virus and the numbers are still up there. It's kind of iffy. And if they're not running any sales, it's like, why am I going to take that risk anyway to go out there to buy full price retail items? Would it make any sense? Mm -hmm. uh, let me go back up. Let me see. No broke resellers needed. Can't Alex can't wait to scope up all the RBX. Yes, please. Right. Um, have you ever have they ever kicked you out of the store for looking up item or to refuse to sell you items? Um, that one's from Mike. Um, yeah, when you get caught double dipping. <laughs> oh, that's why. <laughs> Uh, that's a that's a weird thing though. Is I actually asked um, Nike employees recently, like, is that a true, um, you know, rule? And so what I'm talking about the rule is, hustle be going in the morning, 10 a.m. as soon as they open, buying 10 pairs of let's say Jordan ones that they had, and then going back at like 2 p.m. to buy another 10 pairs. Um, should they stop you or not? What if you know, B had a change of mind. Is like, you know what? Or what if he buys a different shoe, 10 pair per style? Is that wrong? Is that so wrong? That's I don't think so. If it's a different shoe, it shouldn't be an issue. But <laughs> but I did get kicked out. Not really kicked out. I got denied, denied. a purchase. Got blocked, the Kembe, by a lady that worked there for her whole shift. <laughs> All, all day, she was pulling doubles. And she said, were you here this morning? Oh, no. Nah, I can't sell you this. No. no oh, Come on. <laughs> Come oh, on, man. <laughs> Block me. Block me. While Glenn out there changing outfit and crap like that, Glenn had a different cash register, so he was safe. <laughs> all right. So we do have a guest. Josh is coming in. Let me see. Hey Josh, guys, what's up? What's up? How's it going? Uh, it's going. It's going. Just sitting at home working. That's about it. What state? Uh, you uh, North Carolina. I live in. It's called Cary. It's about ten minutes from downtown Raleigh. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I I got some inventory that I've gotten through, um, like beater boxes and stuff, hmm. and um, like I got a pair of Yeezy breads. And they're worn and stuff, but I'm kind of like Leary. I've always sold the more expensive shoes on Goat just because it, just to trust it, not getting any returns. And I was wondering what your guys' thoughts were because I'm sitting on some stuff, but I'm not going to UPS. I'm kind of like Glenn, like I'm I'm staying home as much as I can. Mm -hmm. So I wonder what your thoughts were. You know, is that okay? Does that happen a lot where people return fakes or you know stuff like that? Because I mean, you know, five six hundred dollar pair of shoes that's a lot to eat. You know, 
Yeah, so I haven't been selling any like Bread 11s, Turbo Greens, or even the Jordan 4s um, that I got. None of them are on eBay. And some people, I mean, they trust eBay 100%. I'm pretty sure it happens from time to time. They'll get yeah. leaks, things like that will happen. But I'm kind of like you. I don't want to deal with that for those higher end items, period. Same. So yeah. Just sticking to StockX and GOAT. Uh, when it comes to those goat, unfortunately, right now they are taking forever to check on things. Sales do seem to be a little bit slower on goat than stock X, uh, but that's what I'm doing. I'm just relying on those two. Yeah, I think I think you'd be better off just keeping it in goat. Uh, you have to think that, especially with I mean, we talk about it like the higher sneakers are not higher end sneakers are really not moving that great uh, during this time, just because people are just holding on to money. And um, but you have to think, you know, stimulus package coming in, rolling in. You you, do, you don't know if that's just under disposable income. But you have to think too in the longer term. If you have like really actual good, you know, high quality items, high end shoes. I mean, I would be leery and selling it now because you have quarter three and quarter four coming up. And yeah. I would just consider at. I mean, if you got it low enough that. I mean, you're thinking that you might be able to double that thing on Q4. I would, I would 100 hold yeah. on to it unless not, because even in my inventory, the last ones to go are the good quality inventory. I'm even not budging it. If my bottom is 150 and the guys like trying to, you know, try to get me to 135, I mean, there's still good money to be made. But I'm like, no, I could, you know, really at the end of the day, um, I'm not really in a hurry. So I would highly categorize your inventory be like these are the things that i want to hold on longer because my roi is going to be a lot longer and right. i will focus on the stuff that are just what glenn said like you know there are just things that you don't want to deal with anymore and just start moving those stuff uh just cross posting get busy on cross posting that on other random platforms yeah well hey thanks guys i appreciate you taking my question all right and i also saw your email on on jerseys you're looking at like are we looking on sourcing jerseys right now and then kind of trying to see the difference on fakes and real because i know jerseys right now especially um mercari and poshmark are wild on fakes i mean i've seen so many of them now that uh, it's getting insane yeah i was just curious about your opinion i mean i'm always up for learning new stuff but i kind of had a feeling especially now you know with no one moving around and doing much so, you know, I don't want to kind of waste money on that, but uh, but I just was curious about just learning about it and kind of what your thoughts were. Yeah, I think definitely probably something I can do for like the Nike NBA jerseys and just some different signs you could tell um, for some real and, and fake. So, um, but yeah, thanks for coming on. Appreciate yeah, man, that. thanks. I appreciate it. You guys take care. All right, you too. All right, came on, had some questions. Anybody else want to join in? I'll throw uh, that up. Link up throw that link in there and see dvd caroline which is sports yeah. la who else wants to yeah it? yeah it was in dallas so i got kicked out in dallas <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah the, the dallas outlet as they're mm-hmm. asking where'd you get kicked yeah. out <laughs> oh man yeah it was that one so uh when we went the second time i did change i put on a different hoodie i put on that uh what is it called that bag thing that yeah, the, the I put on some uh, earphones or something, and then yeah, I was like real confident. Nah, I'm not changing. They're not here. Uh, we got there at 10 a.m. and then what? We we came back at like seven already at night. Yeah, it was way later. It was, yeah, way, it was way later. Too. I was like, there's no way somebody's working this late. And then next thing you know, same lady that checked me out and then grabbed my pass and then looked at my orders. And she was like, see, you were here earlier. Like, golly. I was like, and I was like, so. Hey, that's, a, that's a new thing, though. I mean, they, I mean, she kind of went a little risky on like checking the account to see what's in there. Right. But right. now with the virus stuff, hey, no one touching my phone. Right. Now, now yeah, maybe you can get away with different, for sure, different for things. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Armand says, uh, what's the difference with scams done on PayPal? They can't be done on Mercari and Poshmark. I guess for me, personal experience with Poshmark, you got to accept the return if the buyer really claims it's fake. Um, that's the thing. Um, it's a hard way to, to do that. Um, I had a bad experience as a buyer with Poshmark. I bought a Brady jersey. Uh, photos were legit. When it came in, it was so fake. 
So all I had to do was, you know, take a comparison photo of the one that he was selling. Um, and I won, I got my money back. Um, but with PayPal, PayPal's a lot more, uh, a lot more forgiving uh, because they look at your track record. Uh, I haven't personally lost a case uh, in PayPal for like the last two years because, you know, uh, they know my selling record. Uh, but what usually PayPal does, or, or example, bigger companies, they pretty much pay both people. Um, eBay does that as well. They will do about two to three per year per account. Um, and then, and then after that, you know, eBay will just let you know that, you know, it's part of, uh, doing business. Although you can offer a 50%, uh, a refund, uh, that would be the lowest you could do. And then you could just try to fight it again on eBay. And they'll, sometimes they'll refund you the other 50%, um, or most of the time, you know, it's, it's part of the business, but, but, you know, like there's just a lot of uh, stuff that can happen, but between me and Glenn, well, within the last three years that we've known each other and we've been communicating a lot, we haven't really, well, there's probably no five bad returns or bad scams within our accounts within the last two, three years. Right. Mm, up to i'm trying to think which ones i know one on ebay i did get a book back instead of my air max oh yeah that one um yeah. <laughs> what else did i get back i did get a used air max the same pair but they were clearly used oh um, i got that back so it was a switch well yeah it was, i mean it's the same shoe just that i sent it brand new but oh, when right. it came back it was it was used they used it wore them maybe like two, three times, but it was good enough to see, you know, like the insole and different things that were mm -hmm. dirty. And so in that case, I took off the percentage, mm -hmm. which regardless, like if you're sending them back to me and I see that they're used, I'm taking off the full 50% that I can. Like, right. I don't think, it, I don't think I can just do like, oh yeah, well, they're slightly used now. I'll only take off 15%. There's no, right. no point. Because now going from new to pre-owned is a huge difference. Right, right. Uh, whether with or without box, big difference in there. So you can take off the most percentage that you possibly can. The bad thing is when you're selling something like, let's say a high-end sneaker, let's say you sold high-end sneaker for 300 and they come back and you got the fakes and they kept a real pair. Um, no matter what, you can talk to whoever you want on eBay. They're all going to do the same thing and they're going to tell you, you can take off the 50%. 50%. From that. So now your 300 sale turned into 150. Now, if you got the pair, let's say there were a Jordan one, you paid 175 plus tax. Now you're out like 40 bucks. Um, and then, you know, whatever else that comes with that PayPal fee or everything. So in that case, yes, you will lose, but we're also assuming it's not going to happen as often. Right. There's no tell. It can it can happen, cannot happen. We don't know. It depends on the buyer and whatever scams they have up on there. Yeah, hundred percent. It's, 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 it's not, it's not as bad as what everybody thinks. Like, what between, I what I sell about two thousand to twenty five hundred transactions a year, and I haven't, I haven't had a book return to me. <laughs> you know, like those are just by chances. And Glenn's pretty unlucky when it comes to returns and stuff. And what he only had two or three. So yeah, too, too many. Yeah, it's it's not a lot. Let me see. Amazon, is it worth going through all the work to get ungated in Nike? They take a bigger chunk in fees, and I heard it takes about two weeks to get paid. So uh with Amazon FBA, I know there are some people out there uh charging to get ungated. Some of them are like thousands of dollars. There's other ways to get ungated with Nike. Um, but it's not, it's not as easy. It just, you have to really look into it and see what you can do. I probably wouldn't personally pay the, uh, three or 4,000 other people are charging. Um, but, uh, bigger chunk in fees. So yes, the fees are higher, but I would also look at when it comes to Nike, just seeing how many other people are sending in the same products. Like in the Nike outlets, there's a few models that I've gotten that I've sent them in and then, you know, two weeks later, there's only five sellers and I'm like, all right, cool. Like this is a good, this was a great pickup. A lot of times 
I picked up certain running shoes. They look great when I scanned them in two weeks later. Now 31 sellers, 37 <laughs> sellers. Um, and they've already they've already gone down to the you know $60 price when I scanned it. They were at 120, 130. This happens a lot more than than usual. You right. we, we just don't see the final sale in at the very end, you know, on YouTube channels, on Instagram. Things like that. Yeah. Yeah. The profits look great when you first scanned it in. What did it look like at the very end? What ended up happening? Right. So with Nike on Amazon, be very, very particular in what you're picking up. Um, especially because you you have to go in in bulk. You can't just go in, pick up three pairs right. of that same thing, send them in. You're not gonna make that much, you know, that much money out of those. You really have to buy 10, 12, right. 20, 30 pairs and see great results assuming it was a great buy right and then and then you have to see the limitations too you can only buy 10 per person per style so so with the people that i you know the people that that buy from my outlets they usually roll with two or three people sometimes five people um so at that point like what like nobody's really working or doing that for free unless it's a family business right but but you have to think that i mean your overhead cost of total of it you know even if they're your buddies i mean you still probably i would feed them you know give them free lunch or something like that or <laughs> give them something but at the end of the day you have to move the the people that we've seen that are really successful flipping nikes on amazon are the people that move and that spend about two hundred thousand dollars like every other week they just go all in deep and they're the ones that if it's if there's not much money to be made, they're willing to sit on it until everybody sells out. So you gotta play that game. And for some for some reason, Glenn, all of them have really good amount of capital. You know, they're like yeah, they're gonna have big capital. either they're gonna like just you know mess around with you and be like, okay, I'm gonna make a dollar profit on this. Sorry, too bad on you. Or they're just gonna wait on it and then they're just gonna sit on the item until everybody sell out. See, uh, Mr. Sports LA, I've gotten, I've been getting a lot of full price sales and not getting offers, which has been great since mm -hmm. we've been home. Um, has the same been happening for you guys? I think I've been getting, mm, not really. I think I've been getting buy it now and best offers. Yeah, I, I haven't seen the, the shoe sales as much as I did two weeks ago. I think it's the same. I did get a lot of, uh, you know, just, I think I get a lot more uh low ballers this time uh, <laughs> i'm not i'm not the one to complain about them but but they're just crazy low ballers and you know like if some shoe i was trying to sell for like 150 and then they come in and offer at 70 and and i just respond like oh wow that's very low uh is there anything wrong with the shoes like i have that saved <laughs> and then i respond to every low baller offer and a lot of these low ballers don't even send the offer they message you hey will you take 70 for this and then and then i said i said oh wow you want 80 dollars off my shoes is there anything wrong with it and then they just respond oh i don't have money and <laughs> it's there and i'm like uh if you don't have money you shouldn't be trying to buy a 150 dollar shoe so but you know i guess it's either that or it's one of you guys here just trying to source from my store. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny that uh, they have that voice when you read it in your head. Like, hey, will you take 70? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see the other one on the chat. Where are we? Those are a good question in here. And I totally forgot where it went. Oh, I just had a buyer cancel the order. Uh, while the shoes are already in transit to them on Mercari. Now, that's funny you just mentioned that. That just happened to me yesterday. Uh, so I'm going to see what happens with that and see when they get it. Had to try to intercept the package before it got there. Uh, that's mm -hmm. the first time it ever happened, too. So probably we'll swap them, Mark. Let's see what happens. Uh, hopefully not, but could happen. Uh, a book. Laugh out loud. <laughs> for the book return. Let's see. I've had customers return car parts to me multiple times with no packaging, so they got damaged every time eBay has refunded the customer and let me keep the total from the sale right yeah so intermorph so oh five dollars bar tech to make up for the low ballers thank you yes, for that. Sir. 
Uh, let me go back up and see. There you go, five bucks. Would you think lower? <laughs> uh, what's the most money you've ever lost on a pair of shoes? Most lost? I guess I would say. I mean, you didn't lose money. You just lost potential profit. Yeah, I would. I would say that, and that could be for multiple platforms. Like um, my instance for. The those George, I mean those uh, Hornets Air Max 98s that had a weird smell that I sent them in the StockX. Like that was a potential sale, and then of course they came back. You're paying the return fee sometimes, depends on mm -hmm. you know, you know, how your sales are or whatever. Now in that case, those potential money that could have been made that didn't happen now, and now I have the pair, kind of like that. Now I'm making less or things. Uh, but as far as getting ripped off or anything. Nothing like that. Because even then, if you're taking 50%, you're just not making the profits that were there. Luckily, it was on like Ross buys that I paid 55, 65. Right. Now, if I paid 180, 200 for a pair of Jordans, that's different. Yeah, because here's the thing when you've been doing this for a while and you're actually trying to do the research and not just try to buy off of what people said and you actually do it, you shouldn't be losing money. Worst case scenario is you're losing the potential uh, profit or you break even. That should be your standard. There shouldn't be a buy that you could potentially lose money because why are you even trying to resell if you're trying to just lose money, right? Uh, uh, worst case scenario, uh, eat the humble pie and return it and get your money back. That that should be kind of like your rule. Um, and yes, Glenn, when are you giving me Korean barbecue? <laughs> uh, right now we're on pandemic, so I'm going to milk this one out until we get back to normal. <laughs> I have to pay for Korean barbecue for B and Jake and yeah. whatever else. Uh, have your returns jumped due to pandemic? Uh, uh, actually, no. It's just regular. <laughs> last week I had like five returns. What? Yeah, Kobe ADs, those uh, team basketballs, people have been returning those. Someone returned. I'm gonna get it. I'll show the returns on Wednesday's live okay. show. Someone returned the uh Wizards shorts that they paid a hundred dollars for. Wow. This one was worse. Someone returned. You know what's you know what's crappy though? Um, you always get those questions from buyers, and when you're getting multiple questions, it's like I know for a fact if this person yeah. buys this item, they're gonna return it right away. I was like, should I even sell it? But it was a uh, player worn jersey that I got at the swap meet. Ten dollars, Arizona Cardinals. They paid one ninety, returned it immediately when they got it, and they're like, "I don't like the material." Same day, same hour, they probably got it. I got it back already. It wasn't a you know scam or nothing. I got it back. I relisted it, and now who knows what's gonna happen? But that one, that one burned into my soul, into my heart. That was a great sale. Uh, still kicking at sports, and he is in. What's up? What's going on, guys? How you been? Oh, uh, finally, you can see a face, or it's still kicking at sports. Still kicking at sports. Yeah. So listen, first of all, Glenn has been calling me still kicking at sports since I got on. I want you to read the bottom. Still kicking still sports. Kicking <laughs> sports. I think I've been saying still kicking at sports ever since from I Jump Street from the beginning. From the beginning. Still, I, words. <laughs> eBay, eBay Joey and Stevie D and I talk about it all the time. We laugh every time you say it. <laughs> That's hilarious. All Se right. Next, second next. of all, last night's show, Jake was a hundred percent correct with his list of Easter oh. shoes. Oh, but that's because I'm an old head like him and Stevie. Oh, okay. True, true. okay. Jake, we uh, someone does support and like your list, so yes. right, right, Keep right. Watching. My how question: much, How much did Jake pay you to get on this show? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. I'm trying to pay him to show me that Jake Hawk. Yeah. <laughs> so my question is uh, on goat. They're taking so long right now for people to get their money. What do you, I think it's better, and I already have, to put my listings on vacation mode mm. Mm. and just cut them out completely because if I sell something on goat. Clearly, I'm not selling it on eBay or Macari or Depop or wherever I might have it listed. And 
it's preventing me from making the sale. Yes, I've made it. Right. But right. I mean, I've seen people in the chat saying they're not getting money for two weeks, three weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, that could turn into four weeks, six weeks. Right. You know, who knows? So maybe for, you know, at least for GOAT, um, you know, maybe it's just better to, to put it on vacation mode. And when things get back to normal, you can uh, can take it off. Um, I I mean, let, you want me to answer this, Glenn? Yeah, you can go first. And I'll um, well, so just looking at my stuff that I already sent in my last my last shoe that I sent in that hasn't been uh, uh, verified yet is April 4th. So it's been a while. Um, Almost 10 days. Yeah. And I did have a lot of shoe that I had prior to that, and they still went on and verified it. Um, I've actually considered that. I've actually considered putting on vacation mode. But here's the thing. If I put it on vacation mode, I mean, we do know that there's – there both has a different buyer it's more for like a sneakerhead platform uh than selling it to ebay so weighing out the options is if i sell it on goat it's really just kind of like a money put away uh kind of have like a savings when the when when everything's over right so let's say i won't get it verified until the next two weeks and then Compared to eBay, if I sell it, I get the money now. But the, the thing is, I'm not really trying to use my eBay, that e the money that I'm selling to buy things right now. Unless you have an outlet or a, an opportunity to buy more, um, that might be a good strategy to get the money now and not wait for that go verification for a while. Gotcha. But, but it's just how, how you're trying to juggle the money. If, if you're trying to use the money, I mean, that's a good play, that what you're doing. Yeah, I think um, I'm still dying from the still kicking it sports thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I think the if you, if you um, have different capital set in different places and that's something that you don't really want to risk right now with GOAT, then I would probably say turn it off. But with me, I still have it on. I agree with B. Like, I'm not a ru in a rush with that capital. I can let it sit there. But I do probably recommend maybe getting that money out a little bit quicker. Like if you're used to waiting till it hits like a certain amount to get the money out of GOAT, maybe get it out sooner just in case something does happen uh, with the app because yeah. nothing nothing can surprise us at this point with right. what's going on in the world right. period. Now. Yeah. So. <laughs> so. And going back to something else you guys were talking about, uh, cross-listing. Uh, I completely agree with the B. I cross-list not just on Macari and um, Poshmark, but also on Depop and Grailed. Because uh, uh -huh. I do a lot of vintage tees and things like that. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't think I would be even thinking about an online assistant of any kind until I got to, like you were saying, 2,500, 3,000 mm -hmm. listings. Uh, it's pretty easy for me. I just break everything down into spreadsheets Mm -hmm. and what places I have it. Some places, you know, I might not have a certain pair of shoes on Grailed, for example, because that tends to be a little bit more of the higher end mm -hmm. type thing. I'm not going to put something that, like, they don't take soccer cleats, for example, right, right. Take baseball cleats, things like that. So as long as I know where everything is, uh, like, for example, I sold a pair on Depop last night, and it was just as simple for me to go into my spreadsheet, take it out of Depop, and then just go through each site take it down and I was done in 30 seconds. So yeah. I think if you can just stay organized, come up with a system that works for you, um, you can you can cross list. Um, you just have to be super, super organized because right. you don't wanna sell, you know, you don't wanna sell something on eBay. Oh, oh, right. 20, work 20 seconds later, have it sell on Goat or something like that, so. Yeah, that's 100% true. Um, I think it's, I think that you're correct. You just have to be organized. That's the key to cross listing. You gotta have a master list even I don't have any spreadsheet. My master list is eBay. So my my eBay seller hub listing, you know, flat, I mean, right. columns are on point. So that's why I make a goal that eBay has got to be top shape because that's where I'm pulling everything from. So so 100 uh, percent because you have to consider when you're trying to hire a VA, there's going to be a learning curve for this VA. You got absolutely absolutely. That, and then you got to develop that trust. And, and you're investing all that time, money, training that. And then if you have under a thousand listings, he'd be done in two days. And then what is he going to do? Right. Right. Nothing. So, Nothing. 
so 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 that's why that's my goal i mean because i did have a va before uh with poshmark sharing and stuff like that but mm -hmm. you know it's it's not really worth it compared to everything but like you said if you get organized and now we have the perfect opportunity to be organized and to you know spend time and mastering your process i think i think like you did you did it yourself me and my right. wife were a couple team and we've done it and and i think it's very doable you just got i mean you just gotta be efficient yep like somebody in the chat said it yeah i i'm and i people have you know contacted me through instagram or my email or something and i've always told them you know don't i, I use a spreadsheet mm -hmm. if, that, if that doesn't work for you don't right. use it but right. what you just have to find whatever that system is that works for you I, I I just deal with spreadsheets better before mm -hmm. I got into reselling. I was in the right. business world, so you're using spreadsheets all the time. Right. If there's something that just makes more sense for you. Um, I'd hate to say it. I I certainly wouldn't do it, but even if it's pen and paper, but it works for you, right? That's what you do, for sure. That's certain. I think so. Hustle and Muscle was also talking to us about um, using list perfectly. Can't also uh, send that here as well. So that's something you can look at if you want to learn. Um, if you, maybe some people are already using it too. So that's something you can definitely look at. Um, so how's your uh, sales been in general? They were, they were basically normal right after states started closing down, stores started closing down. Mm -hmm. And then within the last week or so, they've really slowed, uh, on my eBay store. I not only sell shoes and vintage clothing, but I'll sell collectibles, sporting goods. I actually got start how I got reselling was in sporting goods. Mm -hmm. So I'm selling a little bit of that stuff but I'm noticing that most of my sales on eBay are not my sneakers, not the higher end vintage tees. Right. They're kind of like the $25 and under kind of things. Mm -hmm. uh, like I sold a pair of uh, wide receiver gloves that I picked mm -hmm. up at a, a Marshall's a while ago. Uh, soccer gloves, toys, bobbleheads, mm -hmm. puzzles, you know, just things like that, that, you know, yeah, people, knickknacks, you know, people yeah, that exactly like a major purchase, right? Right. Now, on some of the higher, like on Depop, the, I sold, you know, the, they were a pair of Air Maxes that I sold. They went for a hundred. Mm -hmm. um, that's really been, in April, I've sold two pairs of shoes. That's it. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm cross-listed as I can be. So, um, you know, just got to keep the nose down and, and keep right. grinding away. Because uh, eventually it's all going to get back to normal. And that was kind of what I was saying about sports cards too. I mean, I have my own collection. I know they're not grading now, but I have all the downtime in the world. I want to be ready for right. everything, sneakers, sure. tees, everything that I'm doing, even eventually youth sports are going to start back up. So people are going to be looking for, like I sell, use lacrosse sticks and all that kind of equipment. I want to make sure I have all that stuff ready so that when we get back to normal, if you will, that it's, it's ready to go. So that's what I'm spending my time on, just getting my systems down and getting everything ready. Yeah, for also do uh, pre-packing. You know, yeah, that's, that's very absolutely. interesting during this time. Uh, um, I mentioned half of my items are already pre-packed. Now we're moving to clothing, getting it pre-packed, yep. but it's a um, custom SKU. So as soon as they sell, just slap a label, they're gone. Yep. So there's a lot that we can do. Yeah. I mean, there's, you know, I, there's, I know there are smaller level resellers that, you know, they don't have, you know, maybe 50, a hundred listings. It's just a part-time thing. But I think if you're a full-time reseller and you're saying to yourself, like, you know, I'm not, I'm usually working 12, 15 hours, but I'm down to eight or 10 hours. You can find something for those other, other hours, sure. Inven inventory, like you were saying, pre-packing, mm -hmm. learning more about shipping, shipping options, like throw yourself into the education uh, aspect of it too. Uh, Cause there's, there's, you know, I've been doing reselling. I started out part-time. I do a full-time now since 2015. And I know you guys will agree. I learned something new every day. That's why I watch, you know, YouTube videos like you guys and, and try to learn as much as I can. Yeah. So, I mean, during this time, I actually uh, placed an order for uh, boxes. Uh, you know, like I, I've, I've seen especially stuff for gold and stock X, you know, uh, just, just making it more efficient. And then once I got them box pre label, I mean like Markham's Q and everything, they can go to eBay and, you know, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Brown boxes for stuff that could possibly potentially sell on eBay, StockX, and GOAT because we all know um, we don't use uh, USPS for the other two platforms. So yeah, I, I actually put out, and I heard, 
I don't know what show I was watching, but we're, they were talking about different ways that we can source right now. And somebody mentioned, um, you know, people are doing a lot of spring cleaning and they're going to have donations, mm -hmm. maybe reaching out to your friends and family and saying like, look, if you're doing spring cleaning, you're about to get rid of stuff. I'll come and pick it up as long as it's cool with you, like me checking out what you're getting rid of. And then I'll, I'll drop off your donations and take care of the rest. That's pretty that was a pretty good idea, especially, like I said, I do a lot of vintage teas. So, um, you know, if I get the first opportunity to dig through, you know, right. a bag of, of dad's old t-shirts, mm -hmm. I, I, I want to be that guy. So let me ask you on cards. So you've been doing uh, like case breaks, box breaks, or what have you been? I, I used to uh, buy off of uh, case breaks when they first started, mm. uh, you know, a few years ago. I watch some of the YouTube channels just to see what product is out there. And then I'll try to find it at Target or Walmart or uh, what blaster boxes and things like that are out there. Uh, but I have a big card collection from when I was a kid. Um, like I have a bunch of the uh, 86 Fleer basketballs where the Jordan rookies came out of. So uh, I want to get all those prepped and ready um, to eventually send out to get graded. So, uh, and a few other, other ones like that. I'm not talking about having you know, a huge collection go out, just stuff that I don't, I don't need anymore. Uh, my girls are not going to be interested in them. So uh, yeah. I might, I might as well sell them. Okay. All right. Very nice. So uh, yeah, going on out, still kicking sports. See, now I don't know if I want you to change. That's smooth. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I was this, gonna, this roll off is fast. I, I know. I was going to wait until out hustled to when you guys come to, when you were coming to Philly. Yeah. Oh, to stay okay. at. <laughs> but since that's obviously going to be delayed and I had the chance and I know we're in front of some of the, the guy, the regulars, I wanted to make sure I called you out on it in front of <laughs> I like that. Oh, man. Appreciate it. So next time, yeah, definitely come back on and uh, we'll have an open link, try to do this every, uh, every week. So thanks again. Sounds good, man. Talk to you guys. Right. Later. See ya. Uh, so Hustleby Bark Tech does have a question though with the super chat, $5. Okay. Question on pre-packing, since you mentioned pre-packing. Yeah. Um, my one and only concern is that whatever shoe yellows when it's packed, uh, you say they have, you have them for a year and you just don't know. Um, personally, I haven't had an experience of any yellowing. Um, my, my biggest recommendation is um, wrap it in bubble wrap. Uh, the only parts that would yellow is clear sole, right? Clear soles and... Uh, and white the white midsole usually um uh, i have personally haven't had any issues um uh, and that's dating back when i started with uh untouchable tds so that's way way back uh two years uh i haven't had any issues uh it, but of course if it's something that's very high end talking about jordan 11s right uh, the 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 thing that you don't want is you don't want the sole or any of the of the white leather to touch the box because the box has certain like acidity or something in it, some oil that can actually contaminate it that will turn it yellow. But besides that, anything, any solid color, if it's not translucent or clear, you're good to go. And one unique uh, tip that I can give you guys out, so if you guys shop at Nike a lot, I actually use their uh, Nike bags to wrap it and make it kind of like a, you know, bubble wrap to just cover it more. So um, I haven't had any issues. So uh, let me know if you guys had any issues. But for me, um, I haven't had any issues with uh, the pre-boxing. Uh, Stevie D, the only thing we worry about are yellowing are the 98s. 97s and 98s are the worst. They're already yellowing at Ross. We haven't well, even that's true. Um, that's the thing that kind of sucks. Mm -hmm. uh, why are the sports cards market being talked about so much lately? Uh, some people saying uh, saying Gary V. And so the thing is, is that the sports cards thing, I noticed from a YouTube standpoint, probably about two years ago, I started to see more people doing like box breaks and like card, you know, the box and case breaks to where it per team and they could um, sell them that way. And then I saw some channels starting to gain momentum. And then once Gary V started talking about it, probably I would say six months ago or so, then random people started jumping in to the sports cards that had no clue what they are when what things mean. And they're starting to learn that 
Some are, some aren't. Some are making mistakes, just like you would reselling right. to get into the new platform. Uh, but that's really why I think yeah, it's a combination of everything. Yeah, and I think so too. Like well, on the a production or the product standpoint, I think they have they have learned. I think from the sneaker market that if you limit something, you create a high demand. So I think I think they've the supply is a lot less. You know, back what five years, six years ago. You can buy sports cards anywhere you want, uh, but now it's you know a lot of them are resold and are just bought. Um, so I think I think there's they've made less, and they've they've done the one out of ten, right? Uh, but who knows if there's only really ten? <laughs> <laughs> individually numbered, right? Individually numbered and signatures. I think that's something that they've done uniquely recently, right? Yeah, I mean, they've had, the thing is, is that jersey cards, I remember when jersey cards came out, you know, having the game-worn patch and things like that, it was it was exciting. I remember me and my cousin being, you know, pumped about that. Now it's just kind of like a whatever because of autographs, game-worn, you know, part of the helmet and the Nike swoosh part of the jersey. And then, you know, also combination with being autographed or they one of one and then, we have the rookies and they have certain prism and different colors and things like that. So there's just different options out there. The thing is like people are saying they love sports. They love gambling. This is kind of easy for that. Uh, also with YouTube, which I agree too. And buying cases and boxes. I mean, these aren't cheap either. I mean, you're spending two fifty, three hundred dollars $300 a box. It is pretty much like gambling. Um, and you have that rush and like, what am I going to get? What kind of rookie am I going to get? Zion or everything like that. So you are taking big risk with that, especially if you don't really know what you're doing. Same thing. Like some people don't know the retail, you know, retail and hobby packs. What are the differences? Um, some people aren't even looking at how many per box and as far as like autographs or anything. So um, it is a totally different thing, but uh, people are definitely getting into it and spending great money on them. I think Hustle and Silence had a question. I think he took it off, but it had to do with, uh, getting your stimulus check and if you're not if you didn't file your taxes for 2019 we talked about that in the very beginning of the show uh because b was also thinking that maybe he didn't get his yet not filing the taxes for 2019 yet that is not true um you should be able to get it in the next two days right uh, some people are saying that it's a trap they're not trusting the stimulus check which <laughs> might well, have to put it back right into your taxes if you also don't you don't yeah. trust I mean, I mean, take it. I mean, it's good for people to actually really need it, right? Um, and if it's something that you really don't need, I mean, like I was joking, I'm gonna put a down payment in a car. I'm not. <laughs> I'm just. I'm just gonna. You know, I'm gonna hold on to it, and then just more opportunity. Uh, if it's really not mine, if I have to pay it back, well, might as well make money on on that stimulus check and pay them right. Make money off of their money, and then I'll keep the profits. Flip the script, been in cards since 87. It's tough and not a good time to be honest, which um, I do agree on that as far as like a DVD spending, you know, spending a rack to get a $300 Zion, a waste. It's a lottery to hit. Just go right. buy scratch offs. Sports cards are blowing up because of Zion, John Morant, super limited, super high end stuff. Um, buying packs is like gambling. Gary Vee is driving the price up, wake up, which I also agree on that too. Because mm -hmm. that's like, um, you know, someone talking about their own business and then you can get in on the action. You're right. going to do it too. So he's talking about cards that he's yeah. been buying, putting money in. Yeah, he's not, right. Like, period. 100%. <laughs> he's driving the, the demand up. He knows he has the audience to drive it up, right? Uh, and, and we could do it the same way with Jake's haircut. You know, we'll have only fans to see Jake's haircut here. Everybody be hyped. They want to see it. So there's going to be high demand. But but kidding aside, like he's the more he promotes it, because you got to know this guy's already invested in it already. He's not trying to buy now. He's already bought. Yeah. So pretty much he's trying to hype it up. So you'll buy his. <laughs> I like it. It's case with then the cards. Yeah. Well, cards is a better move. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's case with. I mean, he did the same thing as far as like, getting trying to get the demand up like when people bought the first pairs remember we saw them the first pairs people I, were did. I flipped it you flipped it i didn't see you rocking them 
No, what are, you, what are you talking about, man? I I think we saw resellers them. rocking them. Huh? We saw resellers rocking them. Oh, man. <laughs> it's a downgrade. <laughs> if you've been rocking Air Max 97s and all of a sudden I see you rocking K-Swiss, I'm going to be like, bro. Yeah. I thought we were going to see the Gary V's at Ross or Burlington by now. Because they, you know, they're in stock. They're not selling out. Yeah, yeah. They, they. I mean, yeah. They. I think. I don't know how. Maybe he's buying all of it after the that's after it goes to clearance. Maybe. And yeah. see this question. Do you? Oh man, I think I got. I don't. Uh, do you recommend buying shoes in lots on eBay to resell? Like, let's say you have a thousand dollars worth of shoes for seven hundred. Would you buy? Um. um Depends what kind of like is this? Yeah, gonna, you know what you're getting, or is this kind of like a mystery box, or like? Yeah. If they're like beater box retros that you can, uh, you know, uh, kind of like what do you got recondition and kind of restore it. Hey, I mean, it will give you some. I mean, you have a lot of time <laughs> now. You can definitely restore it. Um, I did buy me a flu games for eighty bucks from Mercari that I have to restore. So I'll show you guys the before and after. Okay, look at this guy. Uh, what another question on double boxing or something on mine? Yeah, it's a mistake that I put on the listing. I mean, I double box the ones that come with a box. You know, right. those box come with another box. But as yeah. far as like Ross finds, I'm yeah, just saying, all of those are two box. Yeah. So that is my fault though. That's from Chris. Let's see. Nineties and two thousands killed the sports cards market. Uh, grotesquely oversaturated. Dev. Uh, they've changed that now. Cards are the next be uh, Beanie Babies. How old are you when Beanie Babies are out? When was Beanie Babies? <laughs> this I is like it. 90... I don't know, 90-something. Bro, I'm 90, so I was born in 1990. Oh, you are born in 1990. Oh, so yeah. you're, maybe you're like five or six or something, right? Yeah. I don't know. I don't remember it. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, let me see. Go back up and see what the questions were. What's the longest you've taken to sell a pair of shoes? Um, I have some cleats in there that I have no clue when I got these. These were <laughs> these were when I think me and Carlos got a bunch of those untouchables. So this, <laughs> this probably has to be like <laughs> a year and a half ago. Untouchable twos. Yeah, th these are. And let me let me tell you, I, I have shoes from 2017. Which are the untouchable TD Flyknit Vapors, high, high end, but in a Miami Dolphins colorway. <laughs> I might just give it to Glenn. <laughs> just for me to figure out stuff. Yeah, I mean, just put it in a, you know, hang it there. Tie it, put it on your, uh, out, outside your house. <laughs> oh, Hustle and Silence says my question comment was there, oh, there were a lot of rumors that it's just an advance for our 2020 refunds. Thoughts slash truth. Um, I'm afraid to admit it, but I think it's a truth. I, I've read, I've read it in the, uh, I've read it in the bill. I don't know if it was real bill that I saw, <laughs> um, but there was tax advance. Uh, when I talked to uh, my tax guy, he was saying like, there's, He's pretty much saying this, like right now, everything is complete mayhem when it comes to the taxes for filing taxes, which we know got extended to July. Uh, and then with getting this money and right now, IRS is just all over the place. So he was just saying that he, according to them and the news that he got, that this one wasn't supposed to be like paid back and or, you know, pre money for 2020, nothing. Um, this is supposed to be strictly for the virus outbreak emergency fund money that you'd be getting that's all is it true or not i'm just going with that but i always have money set aside because i don't trust taxes in general i always like I end up like having a baby <laughs> or something so i don't know glenn ends up paying more <laughs> what glenn ends up paying more that's why he just pays way over uh on his <laughs> Yeah, I always try to pay as much as possible. Corona is free from Kent. Uh, so, all right. Any other questions? Um, anything else? I think that was the main things I wanted to talk about. The checks, Goodwill opening, and leading into sourcing, and whatever questions you guys got um, out there that you want to you wanna talk about. 
Let's see, K Swiss used to be heavy in the South back in the days, and those and Reebok classics. Uh, Glenn Payne mad taxes on that YouTube monetization. <laughs> that was one of the things that uh, the tax guy wasn't too thrilled about. That and the merch by Amazon, because you really have to justify what sort of uh, money and you know cost of goods. There's not cost of goods when it comes to like yeah. the merch. That's why man needs to invest in the Lambo. <laughs> There's plenty of CPs on YouTube that explain the stimulus check and break down the bill. I do believe it is free money. So there we go, Giovanni. Yeah. Uh, what's the purchase? A uh, biggest purchase you have made besides the Reds? Uh, Rally Roots banking on YouTube. <laughs> Rally Roots banking on everything. Right. I was making uh, money. Yeah. Straight profits. Hit that like button. Clean hands only. I agree. Baker Brand. How much would you discount for insoles missing? I would just buy a replacement insole. Yeah, that is true. Buy and play. Uh, just put it in the listing. You got some replacements in there. Yeah. Brand new replacement insoles. Yeah. And just get some decent. Purchase besides the red biggest purchase. Um, hmm. I'm going to have bigger purchase coming up. New drops that are coming up, but it might have been one of the highest ones. I think I got almost got scammed today. Offer up Jordan six, Travis Scott. Hmm. That is sketchy to buy that off of there. Um, have you guys filed unemployment for the SBA loan? Um, yeah, we're, we're talking about it actively. Um, I think, I mean, if it's really there, um, I personally want to take advantage of it. Uh, I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, because there's stipulations there that it's forgivable if you use it at certain expenses, right. Or for business expense, uh, what I'm actually looking at it is just give me the loan and I'll pay it back right um i think i think that's how much i'm leaning more into it i've seen there was like a one percent two-year deal and no no payments for the first 90 days something like that uh so i am more interested on just taking advantage of a low interest loan through that uh and if it's forgivable good and if it's not i'll pay back red drums you're late says hi Thanks that you came in. We're almost done with the live show, though. What's your most expensive shoe you found at Ross? Um, I think, what, 129 for some? Didn't they have boots or something for 129 We saw another one for 99 Those are probably the most expensive for us. Yeah, like dry boots. Uh, they did have those, right? Uh, I think 199 was like a Stuart Weitzman. Like mm. some high-end like designer ladies. Let's see, do you what does it say? Do you buy shoe specific insoles or just the or generic Nike ones? You can buy generic ones. I mean, as long yeah, as I don't generic. care, but um, I would probably say, you know, at least without any insoles, period, it's gonna be a lot tougher to move. So at least yeah. you have something in there, just put on there on the listing that they are replacements. Um, Logan, appreciate that. And thanks for watching. Caroline, Menace, Kent. Everybody, thanks for also the uh, super chats that came in, and you guys hung around for a good hour and a half, and we'll be back. So we'll have a live show on Wednesday, the usual live show, and then we might go live on Friday. just depends, but uh, we've just been going live at this point, and um, I think also people wanted to see a video. Yes, the shoe, the shoe collection, which that doesn't really help anybody, but people wanted to see like jerseys, um, NBA jerseys, real and fake. and things. You got to model it, though. I got to model the jersey. All right. I'll wear, I'll wear the LeBron one, maybe. All right. We'll see you guys. Go out and get it.